Gastronomy tubes, which are often abbreviated as G-tubes, are feeding tubes placed through the abdominal wall and into the stomach. G-tubes are used to give formula, liquids, and medicines. They are also used to help vent the stomach. The tubes are placed by a surgeon or gastroenterologist. A G-tube is placed in one of three ways. Number one, laparoscopic surgery using small keyhole incisions. Number two, surgically using a larger open incision. And number three, endoscopically using a scope which passes down the throat and into the stomach to create a stoma from the inside. The endoscopic surgery has become the method of choice at many hospitals. However, some institutions still place tubes surgically. Additionally, people with anatomical abnormalities or who need other procedures may require a surgical placement. When the G-tube is placed, many times the first tube used is called a peg tube or long tube. These are one-piece tubes which are held in place by either a retention balloon or a bumper. These tubes are used for the first 8 to 12 weeks post-surgery. Please note, sometimes the term peg tube is used to describe all G-tubes. 8 to 12 weeks post-surgery, the long tube may be switched to a low-profile G-tube. Low-profile tubes do not have a tube permanently attached on the outside of the stomach. Instead, they have a tube called an extension set which is connected when the feeding tube needs to be used. The extension set is disconnected when the G-tube is not being utilized. Please give feedings and medications as directed by your nurse or doctor. Flush the gastronomy tube with warm water after every feeding or medication. This will prevent the tube from clogging and will keep it as clean as possible. If the G-tube becomes dislodged, call the GI clinic or surgical office for instructions. If you're not able to speak with a doctor or nurse after 30 minutes, go to the emergency department and take along any and all gastronomy supplies. A tube will be reinserted to prevent the stoma from closing and the need for another surgery. If a replacement feeding tube is not available, a Foley catheter of the same size or smaller can be inserted as a replacement tube. A Foley catheter can be used for feedings and stomach decompression until a replacement tube can be inserted. A common complication for G-tubes is the formation of granulation tissue. This tissue looks like red, overgrown tissue around the tube site. It is not dangerous, but it is often very painful and can cause irritation. It may also bleed easily. For more information about granulation tissue, please see the video, Granulation Tissue, Trach Tube, Feeding Tube, and Indwelling Catheter Complication. If granulation tissue is an issue, please contact your medical provider to schedule an appointment. Leaking around the G-tube is common, a dressing such as gauze or a piece of cloth can be applied under the G-tube in case the G-tube leaks. Sometimes the drainage can become excessive and will soak through the dressing very quickly. If this is the case, please contact your medical provider to have the G-tube evaluated. When a G-tube will not flush, it is important to make sure the tube is not clamped or kinked. Try flushing the tube with 10 to 15 milliliters of warm water or an acidic fluid such as cranberry juice or Coca-Cola. Using a smaller syringe may also be tried. If the tube is still clogged, please contact your medical provider. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.